Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Christy Vanirigan. And I'm Colin Lauver. Spotlight uses a special English method of broadcasting. It is easier for people to understand no matter where in the world they live. Life was not good for Lalita Kamblai. She lived in a slum, a very poor area in Mumbai, India. Her husband drank too much alcohol, and he beat her. But life got better. She started working with an organization called Creative Handicrafts. She learned to make clothes and earned money from what she made. She is now independent, and her husband is getting help for his problems. Camblai told CNN, "I know now that I can take care of my two children." I know that I am strong. My husband no longer beats me because he knows that I will leave him. I am not afraid. There is courage in my heart now. Creative handicrafts has changed the life of Camblay and many other women. But how exactly has it brought hope to hundreds of poor women in Mumbai? Today's spotlight is on creative handicrafts. Creative handicrafts began small in 1984. Sister Isabel Martín visited India from Spain. She came to India to visit the slums of Mumbai. Mumbai's slums are very crowded. They cover only six percent of the city's land, but fifty-five percent of Mumbai's population live in this small area. During her visit, Sister Isabel met many women who suffered from poverty. Many of them also suffered violent beatings from their husbands. The women had low self-respect, and they had little education and no jobs. Sister Isabel said, "I saw." They were oppressed. They did not have control over their own lives. They were only supposed to obey their husband and look after the children. Sister Isabel knew she wanted to help the women become independent. So she decided to live with the women in the slums. Soon she discovered the best way to help the women. It was to help them achieve economic freedom. Then their husbands would respect them. More importantly, the women would begin to respect themselves. Sister Isabel began by gathering a small group of women together. Two of them taught the other women to sew. They used cloth to make soft toys for children to play with. The women sold the toys and shared the profit. Then they began to make and sell clothes. 
at first, there was only a small group of women working together. But gradually, more and more women joined the group. The women who work for creative handicrafts are proud and independent. They make clothes from local material with designs made by people in a local tribe. Anjali Topkari heard about creative handicrafts from people who lived near her. She decided to start working with the organization. She saw that working there was different from working in other places. Here, I saw that the relationship was not one of master and servant. Instead, the women at Creative Handicrafts work together for the interest of the whole group. There is not one business owner that makes all the money. Instead, the women each receive money based on what they make and sell. Over the years, Sister Isabel and Creative Handicrafts have developed many other ways of helping women. They have provided daycare to take care of young children while their mothers work. They have started schools for older children. They help poor children pay for their education. And they have developed social work programs like a saving and credit program. The Creative Handicrafts website tells many of the women's success stories. One story is about Pooja. Pooja had an unhappy time as a child. Her mother died when she was young. Her father married again. But his new wife treated Pooja like a slave. Later, Pooja married and hoped she would be happy. Her husband had a small job. But they were poor. Then he became sick and died. Pooja knew nothing about life outside of her little house. She did not know what to do. Then she heard about creative handicrafts, and her life began to change. Creative handicrafts helped to pay for her daughter's education. The organization also helped her to make her house larger, so her daughters had a place to study. Creative Handicrafts provided Pooja with counselling. She was able to talk with others about her problems and emotions. For her, Creative Handicrafts was like a family. Mahadevi Banyer also works at Creative Handicrafts. Because of her work, Banyer can now send her daughters to a good school. She explains how Creative Handicrafts has supported and changed her. I feel this place is like my home, like a family. I used to be very frightened to go anywhere or talk to anyone. But I have gained a lot of courage here. Today, I can face anyone without fear. Lalita Camblay agrees. She believes the women are so supportive because they share the same life experiences. She explained to CNN. Even if you do not say anything, 
They understand. They read your body and your face. They understand because they have been in the same situation. They know. I have never experienced this level of support before. Finally, I am not alone. Today, Creative Handicrafts operates 13 centers in Mumbai, and over 800 women and their families work with the organization. The clothes that they make are sold in India and other countries too. Stores in France, Spain, Germany, and the United Kingdom all sell the clothes made by the women from Creative Handicrafts. Rudy Dalve works in international trade. He buys clothes from Creative Handicrafts to sell in Italy. He likes the way that the organization operates. In a short film about Creative Handicrafts, he said, They give the women the chance to become business people. What I like here is that they give the women power. Anjali Topkari is now the president of Creative Handicrafts. She explains what makes the organization so special. If only a single person receives the profit, there can be no social work. Here, everyone is a member, and we all receive the profit. Creative Handicrafts demonstrates that profit-making and social work can coexist. The writer of this program was Sheila Godwin. The producer was Luke Haley. The voices you heard were from the United Kingdom and the United States. All quotes were adapted for this program and voiced by Spotlight. You can listen to this program again and read it on the internet at www.radioenglish.net. This program is called Creative Handicrafts – Hope for Women in Mumbai. You can also leave your comments on our website, or you can email us at radio at radioenglish.net. You can also find us on Facebook. Just search for Spotlight Radio. We hope you can join us again for the next Spotlight program. Goodbye!